Hi, everyone. Welcome to <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Welcome. I'm Taj McCoy at Taj McCoy Writes on Twitter. I'm Cass Newbold at <laughs> Cass and Writes on Twitter. I'm Cherish Reed uh, at Author Cherish on Twitter. And I'm Denise Williams at Nick Will Writes on Twitter and on Instagram, too. Hello, okay. everyone. I love how yeah. we were almost all sounding like we forgot our last names. I sort of did for a second. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever, like, get in your character's head so much that you, like, introduce yourself? As your That's character? Me. Not as my character, but I have definitely, like, paused saying my character's last name versus my own last name. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I haven't. Okay, maybe that's just me. Moving along. <laughs> Sorry. No, because I never, I never introduced myself as Cherish Reed. My name is Cherish Halliburton, and I keep forgetting that this is a, a writer's forum. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we have full agenda. Yeah. But first, what's everybody reading? Your book. For the win! <laughs> Me <Hopefully>. too. <laughs> I already finished your book. Uh, I'm actually currently reading two. I'm reading one called The Forget Me Not Bakery by Carolyn Flynn. Um, it's, just, it's a net galley um, book. And then I am also reading Catherine Adele West's Saving Ruby King, which Yay! is phenomenal so far. Yes. Uh, I just finished uh, my friend Alice, a uh, draft of my friend Allison Ashley's uh, book she's working on, which was fun. And I finished 40 Love by mm. Olivia Dade, which is just like soft and sweet and sexy. It's a 40 year old uh, fat heroine and a young sexy tennis instructor at a resort. Um, and so that was a delight. And I just started Well Behaved Indian Women by Sami Dave, which comes out in two weeks. Um, mm. But and it's it's women's fiction, I'd say more so than romance. But I think I stay up to like three in the morning, reading the first thirty percent of it. I was like, oh, just just one more page, and nice. then why am I like this? Because my kid will be up in two hours. But it's it's <laughs> phenomenal, and I love just the idea of diving into like multi generation stories of women and looking at like mm. how those different pressures play out. So it's really good. Very cool. <laughs> Did any of you see the cosplay for uh, Olivia Dade's book of the girl who dressed yes, up as a main yes. character? That, that was, was amazing. So cute. That was so she cute. looked just like her. It was so yeah, adorable. I, I want someone to do that for my book. No pressure. No pressure. You're going to have to wear a backpack and some sort of mismatched clothes. <laughs> okay. But it'll be That's, cute. It's not a big deal. Um... No, I, uh, Cass, what are you reading? I am reading How to Fail at Flirting. Um, and I'm hoping that once I finish, I'll have time to read You Should See Me in a Crown by mm -hmm. Leah Johnson. I'm oh, yeah. I'm excited yeah. about that one, too. So, um, I, I have a whole, oh, I can talk about it now. I fucking forgot. I have a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to not being able to say anything about it, but I can actually say something. It. Um, so yeah, I, I have some stories to read for my anthology that's coming out next spring called Everybody. No Should big deal. No big yeah, deal. just subtle. Yeah. Oh my Very God. exciting. Yeah. Everybody so shines. Woo. Yeah. It was really nice being able to finally like release it from just in my brain and whispers. <laughs> Yeah. How many writers do you have participating in this uh, anthology? 16, myself included. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's, many voices. So ah. many, so many. And it's um, going to be a lot of fun, I hope, because we tried to, like, get as many different genres as possible going on. And so hopefully there's a little bit for everyone. Yes. I'm excited. Love it. Yeah. 
but I really, really want to see, read um, You Should See Me in a Crown. That It just looks so cute. I don't know what it's about. I've seen the cover and it's really cute, but... It is really cute. It's a YA. I honestly don't know what it's too much about either, but I know that it has really good queer rep in it. And so okay. that's why I'm like, I want to read it. And uh, if it's anything like the cover, then I think it's going to be a really sweet story. So... Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. But do you guys have like a ton of time for reading right now? Because I honestly like it's so hard for me to sit and read for more than like 10 minutes at a time. I'm only doing uh, the reading when I wake up uh, and lay in bed for a little while or right before I go to sleep. Usually I do it right before. Um, like when I'm laying in bed, that's usually a good time when I can focus on reading, but that's when I read anyway. I should say I'm doing the audiobook of um, Talia Hibbert's new book, mm. um, Take a Hit, Danny Brown, which is yes. delightful. Except I'm just not driving as much, so I don't have as much, I can't get through it as fast. Yeah. 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 Oh. I either read in the morning or write when I go into bed too. Um, but lately I've been feel like I've been really tired this past week, so I haven't gotten in as much as I'd like. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody shines. I want that for the cover. So this is our, <laughs> this is our better than brunch um, puppet. Our mascot. Our mascot named Everybody Wormy. Shines. Wormy. What's up, Wormy? What's his name? Wormy. Wormy. <laughs> oh, okay. The Wonder Worm. Mm. So happy. yeah, because it makes you wonder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, happy. That's his new hat. Anyway. <laughs> uh, have we have we worked at uh, any type of uh, theme song? Has anybody come up with anything? You better than the closest. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I watched Hamilton a couple times this weekend, and I think if we could somehow get Lynn manuel Miranda to work on mm. it for us, I think that, you know, might be a win. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. Unless, Cherish show. Has caught, unless Cherish has caught beef with Lynn manuel Miranda between now and then. <laughs> I don't know Zimmer, too much of, about him. Zimmer is already on the list. You know, like, <laughs> couldn't... Couldn't you like hit Hans up and be like, what's up? <laughs> I don't want him to compose our theme song. You know what it is? Isn't he your what favorite? What it would sound like? <laughs> oh, yes. Favorite and least favorite at the same time. We have a checkered past, he and I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> No, I like the idea of uh, show tunes sounding better than brunch uh, theme. Like, better than brunch, better than brunch, better than oh. brunch. Yeah, better. then we can harmonize. <laughs> better, <laughs> better, 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 better. What are we doing? Better than brunch. Um, yeah, we'll work on it. We'll sort I it like out. I like how our new theme song is now a recurring segment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it but might it's as the well same be. Same song every time. Every better time. Than Brad, better than Brad. Well, nobody's putting a lot of work into it, and I'm a little concerned that we'll never figure it out. So if it needs to come back every episode, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of gripes, uh, Hans Zimmer will be on the back burner. This oh. week's gripe is non-human, actually. Oh. Yeah. So we have a spider in our home that we have named Kaylee, just so that I can feel comfortable with the spider being here, living here, taking up space, and not paying rent. Um, because I'm kind of an agoraphobic. No. Arachnophobic? Arachnophobic? <laughs> but I haven't left the house either. <laughs> So we name the spider Kaylee, um, but she's not pulling her fucking weight in this apartment. She hasn't caught a goddamn thing, and I haven't seen any evidence of her making webs. 
Is she alive? She's yeah, she's in that corner back there Is in the she- kitchen. Oh. She moves from here to there every once in a while. Yes, I am just as concerned as our mascot. <laughs> but the question is, have you seen any other bugs in the house? Yes. Oh. So there is a fly that will not leave, and I cannot get it to stay still enough for me to kill it. And Kaylee and, it. Maybe she's and I feel like Maybe she's vegan. A lot of good that helps. <laughs> there are gnats as well. I've oh, got a yeah. lot of gnats. Um, what are, are they fruit flies? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like if Kaylee was worth worth a damn as a spider, she would have constructed a net by now. A, a web, if a you web. will. What kind, of spi- what kind of spider is she? A net. I don't know. She's small. So maybe she's in training. Maybe she's full. Maybe, maybe she's full of shit. Maybe there'd be more fly flying bugs if she wasn't there. Yeah. Because she's eating some of the fruit flies. At maybe night she just ate a damn dragonfly and she's digesting. While you're sleeping, <laughs> she catches a couple. And then, yeah. 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 Okay, so maybe, here's an idea, here's an idea, here's an idea. Put a little bit of, like, Crayola paint up in the corner, just like a little, like a a thin layer. Yeah. So when she, like, steps in it, then you can, like, follow her trail. (laughs) And, like, maybe you'll see where she goes at night if she leaves the corner, if the paint is at all moved around. And then it's Crayola, so it just, like, washes off. And then it would be like Unsolved Mysteries. You could solve the mystery. You could put on a trench coat and narrate it. Okay. Like, so do I take house. this do I take this information and give it to her as like a a work um, like a work meeting? Like this is the productivity that you've had this week. I'm not seeing any real changes. Do you feel comfortable staying in this company? Is this like a a progress well, report? Yeah. Uh, I think also she's still a spider, so if she's not moving and for two days, maybe you can just put her on a piece of paper and take her out to the yard. Okay. While we're filming this, I'm probably going to step away and kill her. So okay, I'm also she's... fine with that. <laughs> I was going to ask if this is like a like no violent zone or what's happening, because if Kaylee were in my house, she'd be dead already. Same. But I live with a spouse who does not believe in killing spiders. We have to let Kaylee live. He's not listening to me right now. Can you let Kaylee uh, live elsewhere? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you That's can get Kaylee like a spider-sized GoPro or get a drone <laughs> and just <laughs> video. Okay. So, so I have to... F- fund like her. keeping an eye on her surveillance yeah it's this like is, a spider she, documentary and she's already can... living rent free <laughs> or you know just wait till your husband goes to the bathroom and then let Kaylee assassinate her, her whether it's going outside or going somewhere right yeah side note, worry speaking that of drones we it's uh, summer play. you could put her in the toilet and say it's the pool take her swimming <laughs> <laughs> or again, just put her outside. <laughs> I don't touch things like this. This is why I don't touch Kaylee. Because he named her. Oh, and oh you now can't anthropomorphize like... them. Yeah. No. The last, it's not here there this summer because we got our fighting redone, but in previous summers, there's been a huge spider that's been on the outside of our house, but like on the, we have like a hexagonal window right by our stairs, kind of off of the side of our front porch. And this spider every summer like builds this big net or web. Why am I saying net like this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it building a me. net of lies. <laughs> it bugs me, but it's outside. It's not near the door. And so I've always just sort of like, okay, let me check you're still there. Okay, I'm good to go. When we have yeah. my son, we named it Spider Bro. Even though it's clearly oh. a female spider as it is laying like egg sacs and things like that. But um, Ew. I think. But like we'll take the kid to the window and like watch it 
defeat things. And it is sort of cool to like watch that with the glass in between. Yeah. You know, I'm also, okay. if they're in the house, I'm yelling for my husband to take care of it, but. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, upsetting. Okay. So that's, that's basically it. This week. That's basically it. Kaylee needs to shape up or ship out. <laughs> in my last apartment, about as I was started packing, I was about two weeks from moving, and um, I walked from my bedroom into the living room, and there's a black widow running across my ceiling, Whoa. just running, running, just like, like it, like it owned the place. You know, like just taking over, and the I, fucking gall. I am terrified of, of pretty much anything, and so. Um, what did you do? Well, first I text my landlady because my my (laughs) husband is on her property. And so I was like, can you send your husband to come and kill this? Um, Yeah. But he took too long. And so we had an epic battle uh, because it was on the ceiling. And so, you know, like I needed to get it off the ceiling. So I used to broom and (gasps) beat it to death because it took, like, it it fought back for for a while. Yeah. Like, so. Oh, yeah. This, this went on for a good five to ten minutes. Um, and then finally, it it, it it moved on to another plane. But You're uh, basically a hero. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was, yeah, I regular like, spiders are bad enough, but a black widow, I was like, I no, was that's like, like... What? And so, like, of course, as, as it's finally died, I, like, step outside because I need a minute because that scared the crap out of me. And... Yeah. And then, of course, then the landlady's husband comes and he's got like brooms and, and spray and all these things. And I was, he's like, did you get it? And I was like, it's dead. He's like, good, because I was scared anyway. And I was like, hey. you know. You are basically the last five minutes of every Lifetime movie where the woman has to kill her attacker and then the police show up. It was like, you, enough, but spider. You basically lived enough with a spider. Ugh. I it's, think we're going to need a content warning or a trigger warning or something on this because <laughs> we're talking a lot about spiders and I know my fear is real and I think others are too. Yes. All right. That's all we have about my gripe. Uh, this is the warning because I don't know how to put like anything on on the screen yet. <laughs> warning. We don't, <laughs> we don't have a theme song. For trigger warning. <laughs> We don't have a theme song. Right. Cass isn't editing anything. <laughs> and a fly and a spider are terrorized like me. This is the worst summer ever. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So upset. It could also be like the Matthew McConaughey because it's like a little mustache. <laughs> okay. And and to uh, clarify for those watching, no, we've not been drinking. No, this is not, just us not, in our not yet. No, it's only eleven a.m. Yeah, stone cold sober. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had things to talk about on a yeah. list. What else is on the agenda, Denise? Um, we have a writer's tip and our daily grizzle. Oh mm-hmm. yes, grizzle. Writer's tips. Okay. What do we got? Thinking about the writing process or just trying to make it. Basically, I know that my issue with writing anything has to do with organization. So I've been using um, Google Google Slides. Do you guys use that for PowerPoint presentations? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I've just been putting beats on different slides and, um, you know, romance the beat is what, 20, 21 slides or something, maybe 20 slides. And I just use every card for each beat and I use the note section if I want to flesh something out a little bit more, but you know, that's what's been keeping me organized and staying on track. It's a good idea. I kind of do that in Scrivener on the cork board. Mm-hmm. I do that same in, concept. In, in Google Sheets, so on a spreadsheet, and have it so that the, the beats line up with the scenes. And so 
um, pretty every single scene has a row. Um, and it, it's a very elaborate start, but it helps me stay organized and helps with the pacing. Mm. Yeah. That, that's my major concern with writing anything is like staying organized. If I don't, if I don't have like a, a set trail to follow, then things get really muddled, which is what's happening right now in my third act. <laughs> so I haven't been using the beats that well, but it's also like, you guys know, I, I've been writing a heist for what seems like 11 years. And so uh, the mystery and the heisty part, I think is probably the most complicated thing I've ever written. And not all of it can end up on beats. So, or no cards. Do you guys always write from like chapter one down to the end or do you skip around? I usually write from beginning to end. This last book I was working on, I, um, I just was playing with it at first and I'd write the random scenes that I wanted to. They were all the love scenes and um, the sex scenes that weren't always love. Um, <laughs> and then like, it was a weird way to write the book because I very much then like piece slotted the love scenes into where they fit with the beats. Like I think it still follows it. It still has a solid arc and kind of plot structure, but that one was weird because I didn't start from the beginning, even like telling myself a story. I just had these sort of random sex scenes and then figured out how they fit. But normally I write from beginning to end. Yeah, I write from beginning to end. I, I tried once kind of skipping around and um, it, it didn't work well for me. I had a really hard time then kind of bringing everything together and having it flow properly. Um, so for me, I just have to kind of go in order. Me too. Yeah, I've only, I've only done it like once and Taj is right that bridging the two pieces together is really difficult for me at least Cass I feel like you you don't write linear I actually do you do I, I, it's a I fly. sorry <laughs> <laughs> my brain is is stuck on I I can't go any farther until I have revised previously so like I if I were to try and do it in different areas, I think I would maybe like have smoke coming out of my head because I can't keep going until I've, I'm satisfied with what's behind. So I can't fast draft because I'm constantly going back to the chapter behind me. It's a struggle. I don't yeah. know. It's a struggle. But at the same time, then when I'm at the end, I'm really happy because then I don't have to keep reading it over and over again as many times and writing it. Like, I still have to rewrite it and stuff. Don't get me wrong. But um, but it just feels like it's adding little tiny things here and there, or like smoothing out certain sections instead of like adding like super big fillers or taking a whole bunch away. Okay. Mm. I, don't know. I think my help week you? Is... Oh, go ahead. No, you're fine. I was going to ask Cass, would it help you to plot beforehand? I wonder if that... Maybe. Possibly. I've, I've tried a little bit. I find the times that I get the most writing in is if I have absolutely nothing in my head. <clears throat> Like, no ideas whatsoever. Like, if I just sit down and I'm, like, looking outside and it's raining and I'm like, oh, it's raining. And then I'm just, like, typing away and I have no idea what I'm typing until I'm done typing. And then I go, oh, that's my story right there. <laughs> okay. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, if if it works, keep at um, it. I don't know. I think it's also like bad too because someone will be talking to me to my face in my eyes and then like five seconds later I'm like, huh? What'd you say? Like I zone out in these weird ways. My attention span is very limited. So, um, but I guess it helps with the daydreaming and writing because apparently my brain goes somewhere. I just have no idea what it's doing until it's over. But no, it's the creativity. I don't know. It's something. 
<laughs> but had, all three of you plot? Every single one of you? Um, More or less. I was going to say, though, I think um, my tip would be along those same lines of sort of listening to your intuition. So like this book I'm working on now, like even more so than I normally do, I was pretty meticulous in plotting it all out. Kind of did a rough plot and then a specific like scene by scene development and I started writing it. And I was really struggling in the first three chapters and I should have listened to myself at the end of chapter one, but I wrote three and then realized this isn't where the book needs to start. It needs to start in what I had planned as chapter five. Um, and so once I did that, started in chapter five, wrote the next three chapters, like, in a day. Um, and then, so I, that idea of just, like, listening to intuition, I still wrote those first three chapters. I'll use that content in some way, but, like, not forcing the plot, but really listening to kind of what your gut tells you. Right. Or well, later on, true. maybe what your editor tells you, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my tip for the week. Uh, more right, I can, How? I can hear you. I'm sorry, I'm... Talk again. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Oh, um, do you, do you guys, when you're writing your first line, like you know how everyone says the first line is like the big catch-all, grab them. Like, do you spend time writing your first line? Does it come to you right away? Or is that something that you come back to and you're like, nah, I got this. Or do you care? I don't spend time on it when I'm first writing it. Because I think that's, for me, like more of a line level thing when I get back to it I can as long as where I start the story I think is captivating I feel like I can go back and capture a line I think my first line for how to fail at flirting like stayed the same it might be the only line in the book that stayed the same from my first draft to my last but I think it's pretty much the same as it always was um but yeah I don't usually try to spend time on that first line because usually when I start the story I'm like oh I got this good idea I'm so excited about it and I'm not annoyed by it yet at all yeah yeah Sorry, my I didn't hear that, that question. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. First lines. Do you put do you put oh. a lot of time and effort into your first lines? <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. We're, um, your spider is failing you. <laughs> I just have all these puppets ready to go, y'all. <laughs> Taj, you were going to answer the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say mine um, in in the manuscript that we're current that's currently on Sev. Like we, the first line changed many many times, and it's because I kept getting different feedback from different people about where the starting point should be, um, and. Um, like it originally started with the breakup and so it was like this really like in your face kind of start at the beginning and then um when I was querying I received an R&R &R and they were basically like oh but I think it needs more of the backstory um and so I started before to kind of show how the relationship was before the breakup um Ironically, the person who requested that R&R &R then gave me the feedback it should start with the breakup. So that happens. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then we changed the beginning um, once I signed with my agent so that um, we could give just kind of a better idea of, of where they are. And, and we made kind of some drastic changes developmentally to the story. Um, so it's, it's changed a lot. Um, and so I think moving forward, I, part of what I want to do is just kind of make sure that I feel comfortable with where the start is and it gives what it needs to, to kind of set the story. Um, mm -hmm. But I think a part of my tip would also be, you know, um, in, in taking advice, just make sure that it actually helps you tell the story that you're trying to tell. Yeah. Um, sometimes advice, it's, it's typically always well-meaning, but it doesn't necessarily, um, 
help you in telling your story. And so you have to kind of be really thoughtful um, in, in what advice you're going to take and what advice you're going to decide to, to kind of leave on the table. True. Yeah, it's true. Cause I've gotten some weird advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that, that kind of advice. <laughs> that one means like a hand drawn on the finger twirling the mustache. Ooh. That's pretty advanced. That is pretty advanced. It takes it Let me to see what a I can do. level. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> uh, I have never paid attention to my first lines, and I now I'm wondering if I if I should be. <laughs> no one's ever pointed it out to me, like, oh, this this first line is not punchy enough. <laughs> huh. I don't know if this I see it. It may surprise you, but I have no artistic training no. formally. <laughs> no. I don't believe it for a second. You're not classically trained? What? I know. My puppeteering skills are all self-taught. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm learning so much. <laughs> are we ready for uh, improv moment with... Oh, yeah. With little characters? With yeah. Grizzled characters. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. That's my prompt. What's the setup? Okay. Give me a setting. Where are we? We're going to be in... Let's do some more tropical. Do you, do you want a profession or like a location? Oh, no. or Give me something. <laughs> okay. Um, factory worker. Midwest. No, no, uh, Rust Belt, factory worker in Detroit. Okay, so she is a former fashion designer. Mm -hmm. At the height of her career, she had uh, models uh, in her clothing in Milan, uh, was a household name, regular in Vogue, and going everywhere. 10 years later, a scandal Send her down the fashion ladder, and now she finds herself grizzled and alone. <coughs> In an attempt to reclaim her passion, she searches for new hobbies, but it has lackluster results. It's not until she runs into uh, a, uh, uh, I don't know what kind of factory. It would be a uh, shoe. Um, a shoe factory. A shoe I mean. factory? Okay. Uh, runs into um, a man and, and who is catching butterflies uh, in the park. And she looks at him and he has such a sense of whimsy about him. And so uh, talks to him and learns that he uh, works in shoe manufacturing at this factory. And they have this sort of very heated, beautiful day together when they catch butterflies. And he shows her sort of the beauty in small things where she has lived this, this sort of grand life. So um, grizzled fashion uh, designer falls for sunshiny shoemaker. Um, but she still has some deeply elitist tendencies and so has to battle those. And it becomes, for her, overcoming that class piece and for him realizing he didn't have to put up with that. Uh, but then both of them realizing the joy that they find. And in the end, her career takes off again with a new line of shoes inspired ah. by butterflies. Oh. Find. And it would be called, okay. um, I don't know what it would be called. Uh, Cobbler's like Net. <laughs> Butterfly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll talk about the title later. As we talked about earlier, don't ever fall in love with the title because it'll probably change. Right. <laughs> so Late. there you go. Too long, Late. didn't read. Uh, grizzled ex uh, fashion designer meets whimsical uh, shoe manufacturer. Now, will together. this take place in Detroit or similar Rust Belt city? I don't, I don't know. Is is shoe manufacturing part of the Rust Belt? I don't know where that is based. 
It's stuck right in between Ford and Chrysler. Is it? Yeah, I mean, basically. I think that, that would determine the setting. Okay. So um, well, there you go. That's, then, my, that's my impromptu pitch. Wait, why did she have to move back to this uh, small town or Rust oh, Belt town? scandal. So <laughs> something <laughs> happened and it came out. It was suspected that she had been pilfering designs. <gasps> Which no. she hadn't been. It was an elaborate setup by her rival, and the rival oh, no. won. And so she was discredited in the fashion designer community mm -mm. and uh, lost all her street cred and shame. was sort of blacklisted in these different places where she just wasn't able to make the money she had before. In the interim, an ex had gambled away most of their savings. Right. Oh, 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 I have and a... so now she's okay. living with her mother. Yes. She has to return to 8 Mile, where she escaped, in order to be this, like, super elite, illustrious, and she's like, that's not my life anymore, Mom. I dined in Milan, and this guy is, like, reminding her of all the fun things that she did when she was a poor kid or something. All of that, and so she comes to realize her own, her own classism and elitism. And then her shoe design, it's like back to basics, like back the hard, basics. the heart of where she came from. She's incorporating it into the designs and shit. And Jewish her new shoes. brand is authentic, and she has the chance to be big and to buy back into those elite circles, and then has the chance to do it, but. Um, Joe Shoe Chart, because he's Show, related to Schumacher. Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. No, Joe Schumacher, a distant relative to Joe Top Chart. Uh, doesn't okay. um doesn't want to leave his job. She assumes that he would like to quit and to sort of live this life of luxury. And he's like, no, I really love what I do. I want to keep doing this. And so then they're at an impasse. And then you have to find out how their love story ends. Can they be okay. like jelly shoes so it like represents her struggle and pain and like <laughs> no, no. No. no like you want the shoe but like there's so much pain behind it I feel yeah. like that's a lot to go from grizzled to jelly shoes <laughs> She hit rock bottom though like that's like it rock did. bottom surrounded by Lisa Frank stickers. Just they like on have the like floor little sparkly... and they're like falling from the sky on you. <laughs> You've got that okay. golden retriever on your nose. Like that's just it would be amazing. So anyway, there has to be a scene where she um she's embarrassed by him, like something that he says or does in front of all of the like bougie people. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't know how to use a salad fork. Something goofy. Salad <laughs> fork. It's the wrong fork. I think probably she would assume he doesn't, and then he does. Oh, okay. And then Just there's take also it, sort of take it your moment. Turn it. Yeah, so for her, like, a lot of moments of deconstructing her own biases. Okay, so he and then, does um, know what a salad fork is. And then he has this moment of like, who do you think you are? And then she has to apologize and it would get real sexual. There'd be a salad fork involved. I don't know how, but uh, Ouch. That's my brand, so. Okay. Anyway, that's my pitch for the, for the week on the grizzled old front. I think it was perfect. Uh, for next time, you can come up with a more, uh, with the prompt that provides an equal challenge. <laughs> oh, a post-pandemic ER doctor. They'll have oh. to be grizzled, right? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and a survivor. I don't know if I want to pitch of that. The virus. <laughs> and where does their love go? They met in the ER and now they're in love. Well, I think we could... Life probably throw it out to our, our audience and they can comment below what kind of uh, grizzled um, prompts they have in mind and there you go. Denise will Denise, why is he sad? He's not, that's, oh. a mustache. that's his mustache oh, the mustache. he's twirling it he's twirling it 
as one does. Okay. <laughs> so Next. since we're better than brunch, um, yes. And it's summertime. It was nice and warm here in the Bay Area uh, yesterday. What is what is a favorite uh, summertime cocktail um, that you ladies like? Uh, I like Moscow the gin and tonic. Morning. Gin and tonic. Yeah, that's a good one. I have a gin and tonic. everything to make a gin and tonic ice cream downstairs. Oh, that okay. sounds phenomenal. That's Refreshing. Really easy. It's really easy. You just take um, uh, whipping, or heavy cream, gin, tonic, and lime or lemon juice, and then mix it up and stick it in the freezer, and it never fully freezes. So you end up with alcohol. Kind of, right. Yeah. So it's like Speaking a so almost like a thick soft serve. Yeah. Like a frosty. Out of the freezer. It's very good. Okay. Oh, like a awesome. Wendy's Frosty, but alcoholic. But with gin in it, yeah. Yes. I've you been... can also just go get a Frosty and pour some gin in it and have roughly the same experience. You could. I've been and making tonic. blood orange gin and tonics, but I ran out. So now I have to go get more blood oranges. Okay. That sounds nice. I'm still drinking... Um, I'm still drinking uh, whiskeys. <laughs> Being attacked. <laughs> it's fucking fly. Uh, just a uh, whiskey and soda. Irish Jameson's or a, uh, it's not summery, but it does the job. Yeah. Um, or, or a scotch, a mid-range, middle shelf scotch. Very nice. Cass? Maybe you could put a little liquor out for your spider and see if that sort of loosened her up to go do some stuff. And she's going to be drunkenly catching flies? At least she's catching some. You never know. <laughs> you never know. A grizzled ex-house spider <laughs> searching for a next meal at any cost. <laughs> With a drinking problem now. <laughs> She must overcome her <laughs> tendency to sit still in order to save her life. The mistress of the house is watching. I know. That's She's weird. probably under a lot of pressure. Cass, it's what like, is your fancy drink? I like Moscow mules if they're in the copper cups. It, they're just so cold. They're better that way. They That's are. True. It's true. And like, if it's hot out, that I, I like that. Or if I wanted a little bit sweeter, um, vanilla vodka and ginger ale makes it taste like a cream soda. It's a very Ooh. simple drink, but it, it's very, you can drink too many of them very quickly because it tastes like a cream soda. But That's I have to true. be very careful with my alcohol because I'm allergic to citrus and oranges in particular. So like, I'd say about 85% of all the yummy sounding drinks oh. I can't have. And then I also have very bad reactions to tequila. Like if I have one sip, I burn so bad in my chest that I have to curl up in a fetal position. And my sister oh. laughs at me every single time because oh. I'll sit there and I'll go, I'm burning. <laughs> I'm bur <laughs> and she's like, well, duh. So I haven't had it in about 12 years probably because the last time she just laughed at me so hard I... <laughs> <laughs> so do you just have to ride it out is it like nothing you can take or do no nothing i can do it had been so long since i had tried it but we were at a restaurant and the margaritas looked amazing and i was like <sighs> I want to try and I try to sip and then I ran to the car and laid down in the car and then she like got everything to go and sign the check and I was just laying there going I'm burning she's like you're stupid oh <laughs> we knew how it was gonna end and I took the risk and failed miserably so I think do you I remember better. what do you remember what flavor it was it wasn't like lime was it I have no idea, but I've tried like tequila straight too, and I get the same effect. So yeah. I think, but the mixture of citrus and tequila is like a major, my body goes, fuck you really fast. So, yeah. <laughs> but I can have Moscow mules with a little bit of lime in it 
and that doesn't, lime doesn't really necessarily mess me up, or lemon, but grapefruit and orange. If it's um, the level of acidity that's in it. If I walk into a room where someone's opened an orange, like peeled it, and it's been a half an hour, my face tingles. Like I can tell that there's been oh, a wow. orange peeled. Yeah, oh shit, sucks. that's an allergy allergy. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I grew up in Florida and we yeah. have orange trees. And my parents love uh. oranges. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bummer. <laughs> I know, I would go sit outside while they had like orange juice in the morning. <laughs> wow. But you're oh. no, you're in no danger of getting scurvy though. You can have vitamin C, just not in those. I yeah. Those I'd manners. I probably shouldn't go on like a six month boat trip or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, As I you mean, were planning to do. I mean, you never know. Does anybody but, get scurvy anymore? It seems like a very. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I it could come back because it's only July. So we still have six months of 2020, so that might be the new thing, like, for August. Scurvy's, Scurvy's back. back. All right. Scurvy it'll is be, hot again. It'll be Kanye's campaign slogan. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which we don't need to get into that. That wasn't my pitch to jump into that. <laughs> but we could. But we no. Don't. No. <laughs> Woke I up did, to that and scurvy. went right back to sleep. <laughs> like, wait, what? Oh, no. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. I like the little guy underneath the pinky. The one with the lips? He's just going, hey. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> I think they all, need, ah. they all need hats. I only have one hat. Oh. <laughs> no, it has are, to, are, we, are we done? No, yeah, because you no. haven't told us what you're. Who who who's pissed you off this the week? The spider. Oh, it's yeah, fucking the spider. Kaylee. Kaylee. Okay. <laughs> but what if you got Kaylee a bitch. friend, <laughs> a partner in crime? <laughs> she doesn't need any friends. She works for me. <laughs> I run a tight ship. Nobody gets scurvy. She's a grizzled old boat captain, and we all know it. <laughs> I do kind of feel like Ahab with this fly. It's like, I'm obsessed now. Don't How flies do usually flies... only live at 24 hours, 48 hours? You would think that this is, the same, this is the same fly from 72 hours ago. Maybe it's just really extra annoying because it wants human connection before it dies. Maybe it's yeah, think about that. Something. Think about that before you swat it. It's trying to whisper in your ear. That's why it keeps flying around you. I recommend killing it. This thing will die today. Oh, damn. I swear on... Was that in your the... back pocket? I've taken an oath. Yeah. And you, you all heard it. Yeah. Anywho, um, yeah. we might... We might be done. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> yeah, I think we probably are. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Cass is not going to edit this, so, I you will. Know. You get it exactly as we are until I get more skills on the editing. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all. Thank you, everyone. That's what it's said. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Bye. We'll see you next week. Bye.